what we're going to be talking about is everything in our life, in our city, in our nation, and the nations of the world, everything comes up before God. And I want you to go into Jonah chapter 1. And I, wanted, I want to uh, talk about that a little bit. And there is several different things you can teach off of in Jonah. You can look at the prophet of God, the warner of God, the, the, the guy on the wall, the watchman that Jonah is. And he's to speak for the Lord. But I want you to see here in verse 2, Arise and go into Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. And we know in Sodom and Gomorrah, the wickedness of those places came up before God too. Notice that they don't come up right away. It seems to take a, quite a while for things to go on before the Lord. Whether it's, whether it's uh, wickedness or whether it's the righteousness of the people, it just doesn't rise up right away. God is patient. He's slow. He's slow to react in many situations. Um, he always is there on time, though. He'll never let things fall to the ground. When you, were, when you rely on God, God, you'll say, golly, God was there. I thought he was distant, but he was there. Right at the right time, when I needed somebody, it felt like God sent an angel to me and upheld me in that situation. All right, so we know that God is not quick to respond, but he is on time. And he tells Jonah, he says, go to that city because their sin, they've been sinning quite a while. And he says, has, that has risen up before me, has, be, has come up before me. I sit in heaven and everything is before me and I'm watching and I've declared today that I'm going to send judgment on that city in 40 days. And so Noah was to go, not Noah, but Jonah was to go. He was to go to that city and do a job for the Lord. But uh, Jonah did not like these people. He did not. They were his enemy. He hated them. He despised them. And to go to that city, he'd just uh, soon die. And so he took off for Tarshish. He took off getting away. And how many know that God wasn't going to let that happen? And that gives us an, an uh, idea about God that even though... There is a, a city or a person or a nation of people that are not right before God. God is still a God of great compassion and of great mercy, amen? That he, he wants to repent. He doesn't want to destroy. But mark this, he will destroy. He will bring a nation down. He will bring a person down. He will bring a city down, Nineveh. He will bring it down. And so he wanted Jonah to go and see this but what the, the the thing I want you to see is everything comes up before God nothing misses God's eyes hallelujah amen so and as you're praying and you're seeking God God doesn't miss a thing he doesn't miss a, a thing and I'll go to a scripture here later on but I want you to see this city that great city and what he wanted Jonah to do and I want you to see yourself as Jonah's crying from the housetop, amen, standing on the mountains, what you have heard in secret, what you've heard in darkness, God says, go out in the light, go out on the mountaintop where the sun is shining and preach the gospel, amen, preach salvation, preach the news, because I really don't want to destroy anyone, any city, any nation, amen. And I believe today that our nation is in trouble. I believe that the nations of the world are in trouble. They're in turmoil with one another, but they are very simple in the way they act and the way they conduct their life. And the laws that they pass are an abomination to God, especially this nation. Especially this nation. Because you ever hear somebody... Um, look at somebody and know their character and they really do something that's very out of character and very wrong and they look at him and say you're better than that you are better than that because that person that's saying that knows them I believe us as a nation we are better than what we're doing amen we are better than this and I believe as a church a group of people a body of Christ that we are better than this amen to allow dictators, people that pass laws to trample down our faith 
And we stand by not saying a word. I believe that we're better than that. Amen? I really do. I believe that not only can we go to the polling booth, but we can shout aloud on the internet. We can shout aloud on the, in the streets if we have to. We are better than this. Amen? That's going on. The quietness. The complacency that's been going on in our lives that we're afraid to talk. Get kicked out of your house. Amen? Let it be said that you've done something. Praise God. Let it be said that you have stirred the pot. You have stirred it because why? It needs to be stirred. It needs to be stirred. You don't always need to be liked. Amen? Not when you're standing for what's right. You see this personality coming out? Be called wrong, but know that you're right. If you be right in the eyes of God, then, then, then you're right. And if you be right in that, then unto death in your righteousness. Amen? Can you see that? You want to live a lie? You want to live under a lie? Really? You want to live for what's right. You want to die for what's right or you want to die for what's wrong? You want to die in wrongness when you can die in righteousness. You want to live in wrongness when you can live in righteousness. Amen. What is right? I want right. I want right. Amen. You want right? Or you want to just get by? We'll get by. Whatever it takes. We'll just get by. No, that's just not good enough. Life is too short to live a lie. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's live the truth. And that's what God wanted Nineveh to do. It wanted to live in truth. It wanted to live in righteousness. Anyway. He said, for this wickedness has come up before me. It's come up before my eyes. Nothing, nothing misses God. Nothing misses God. Somehow we think we'll go sin sometimes and it'll be okay. It's never okay. It's never okay. To fear God is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom says this could be total destruction. This could be a kick in the rear that I'll never forget. Who needs that, right? Who needs that? We don't need that. Um, I want to go to Babylon. I want to go to Revelations. I want to talk about a nation. So we know that he went to a city. And let's go up to a nation now. Does God look at nations? He sure does. I believe this, that God has certain nations that are called to serve him. Certain nations are called to serve him. Certain nations are called by him. Certain nations are just nations that are just are nations that are never going to serve God, that don't serve the Lord that are called to serve him but in a dark way. Called to come down on Israel. Called to try to take Israel. But Israel is a nation. He's God's glory. Jerusalem is God's holy city. Set on a hill. That's what Jerusalem is all about. That's what God is all about. And in, uh, just like here in uh, Revelation 17.8, uh, it said that the beast that thou sawest, and is not, and shall come out of the boundless pit, and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wander, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet they will, they, they'll follow him. Why? Because their names are not written in the book of life. They're just not written there. They never were written there. But your name was written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. You were called to operate under the glory of God. Amen. You are to be Christ-like. And if you're right, you're right. Amen. Jesus said, I come to bear witness to the truth. Amen. He said, I didn't come to bear witness to a lie, but a truth. So we see here in Revelations that we got a nation that I believe that a nation, this nation was called to walk in truth and God's blessing was on them. But they they're walking in a line. It's called Mystery Babylon. And in 18.2, there was an angel that cried with a mighty voice, saying, Babylon, the great 
the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a habitation of devils. And behold, every foul bird and caged and every unclean and harmful bird from all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath, of her fornication, of the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. In other words, you know how our sins are covered by the blood of Jesus? God forgets them. God, he puts them as far as east as from the west. He, he will not remember your sins when you get to heaven. Because you've repented and you've changed your ways. And even though you walk up to Jesus and you might feel some shame inside you. Your head might say shame. God is speaking to your heart and says there is no shame anymore because of the blood of Jesus. I don't remember those sins. I don't remember. Yeah, we can sit down and talk about them. But when it comes to salvation, I don't remember any of those sins. Amen. But this nation that had sins in its past, God has remembered them. God has remembered them. God has remembered them. You would think, okay, if this, if this country is, is the, the United States of America, there has been a lot of sins that are committed. But God says he even goes back in her past and remembers all her sins. Have you ever read any of the stories about what we did to the Indians and in the camps? How we went in and killed all of them? We destroyed them? Innocent people? An innocent people, an innocent race because we were just tired of them? Now we don't like to bring that up. Apart from slavery, the other, and we're sorry for it. We as the, we as the people of the U.S., we look back at that and we go, how could, our, how could they have done such a thing? How could our, our military force have done such a thing? And uh, see, we can cry out to God for a nation. Cry out to God and change a nation. We could be the Jonas that change a nation. But this mystery Babylon is someone that has made the nations of the world rich. Her fornication has spread through the world. When you get, when I, I've gone overseas, and, and the one thing that I've, I've really seen that everybody wants to be like the states, the women dress like the states. How many know that's not really good lots of times? To dress like the women of the states. Because fornication plagues our country. It plagues our country. Susie and I, we were talking about that. And we were talking about uh, uh, just how the, it, it's crept into the church. Um, the short skirts and the leggings that go underneath. And it's, it seems somehow that it's okay that that our daughters and can wear short skirts if they, they got uh, leotards on. That's, that's how the prostitutes used to dress just a few years ago on the streets, and it's crept into the church. Well, you can't see skin. It's just the way it's done. It's seductive. It just is. And we need and run around with those tight stretch pants on. I mean, on some women it don't look very good, but on some women it looks really good. And that's the problem. You hearing me? And we're the number one pornography into the whole, into the whole world. Child pornography. We're passing laws. If you just listen, laws of homosexuality. Men marrying men. And this is what's coming too. David Wilkerson prophesied this, and I was shown this. Churches, choirs, people singing with no clothes on in church. Declaring the Bible, Christianity. How could anything like that happen? It's happening before us. Our nation, our nation and what's being allowed is become an abomination before God. Don't get sucked into it. Don't get sucked into listening to the old music of the 50s. Don't be a church that is just a few years behind of what's going on in the world. Amen? Watch yourself. Critique yourself. Watch out for evilness because that old devil wants to destroy you. He wants to eat you up. Amen. And this is your message to the church. 
but her sins have come up before me. And God said that he'll destroy her in one hour, Babylon. He'll destroy that wicked nation in one hour. And it's just made everybody rich. We are, the United States of America right now, we are the reserve currency of the world. Of the world. Reserve currency of the world. Everybody's got to use our money. If they want to buy anything, any oil, any natural gas, they're trying to get into natural gas in Europe. Anything. You've got to use the dollar. You've got to use that dollar. Isn't that amazing? Who could this mystery Babylon be? Who could be this nation that throws God out the window? Who could be this nation that, that says her sins have come up before me? And then who could this nation be that it has Christian people in it? To the point that God mentions it in the Bible and says, Come out of her, my people, and never go back again. Never go back into what she is, what she represents. Are we supposed to leave the United States if that is the country? If that is great Babylon? I believe us stay here and let's get people out of it. Amen? Let's get people out of the way that she is. Let's get them out of it. We stand strong against, against sin. But we stand strong for righteousness. What Christ preached for. Amen? We stand strong. We try not to compromise in any way. But we, we find good in so many things and lift it up. Amen? We lift it up. Now as we went from a city to a nation, let's go to a man. Let's go into Acts. Acts chapter 10. And we find that the acts of this man came up before the Lord. And God sent an angel. God don't always have to send an angel. He can send somebody. But everything, everything, you as a person, God is slow to anger as we see this with Babylon, right? We see that God is slow to anger as a city like Nineveh. If that great city that is, is Mystery Babylon, if that great city that's in Mystery Babylon is New York City, God wants people to repent. And not only that, God will get him out of there if he's going to destroy the city. Lot, God went in and took just Lot, and he got him out of there. Amen? Amen? God took Mary and Joseph and took them to Egypt with Jesus. Amen? He got them out of there. Why? Because there was trouble brewing, and God watched it all. And the, and the, the wisdom of God and the craftiness of the Lord... They couldn't catch that little boy. Herod, Satan couldn't kill that little boy. Amen? Hallelujah. And he's our Savior. And then he says, now's my time to glorify you, Father. But up to that time, they couldn't touch him. They couldn't touch him. They couldn't touch him. Before your time, nothing can touch you. Amen? You're, you're victorious always. But your life is before the Lord, as this man's life was before God. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion, a band called the Italian band, a devout man, one that feared God with all his house. Hallelujah. Notice this man, something about him. He was a devout man, but he feared God, and all his house feared God. Does that sound like a guy that's ruling over his house pretty good? Amen. How would you like to have a, a president like that in this United States of America? One that feared God and caused the whole nation to fear God. Hallelujah. Boy, that'd be a good day, wouldn't it? That'd be a good day. That he'd have such persuasion over the people that he would cause fear to come on all the people because he feared God. This is what this guy did in his household. And he said, and he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him, saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up before a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa. It's come up before your ways, your ways, your alms and your prayers, your lifestyle has come up before God. And I see that your whole house, your whole house fears God. And this is what God says. Go tell that man that I'm taking him on in the Lord. Hallelujah. Go tell that man that I'm going to open up a door for him and his whole household. Go tell that man that I'm sending a man 
that has been nurtured by my holy son and that he's having a vision right now from heaven and I'm showing him what he has to do. Go tell that man that I'm going to set his whole house on fire. Amen? In a good way. Amen. Praise God. And so this is what God was doing. And notice what God says. It's all come up before me. There comes a perfect time in your life, in your household, that God is going to take your house on. Here there's a blessing coming to your house. Just not one blessing. I believe there's, there's divine appointments. Blessing. Blessing here. On down the road, a blessing there. You just stay faithful to the Lord because it's all coming up before God. He watches all things. Amen? Amen. Now, as you say, we're living in a, a country that's passing laws that are a total abomination to God. Total abomination to God. Churches are passing things that are a total abomination to God. But we have the bright side that is not an abomination of God. We have churches that are following Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We got things that are going on that is a delight to God. And God is talking to his people and he's saying don't partake of their sin. Just stay out of it and come with me. I believe this, that God is opening doors. He's going to open a door for this little church. He's going to open doors for places like this little church that a group of people that gather and pray to God and serve the Lord and watch out and understand why they act the way they act sometimes. Amen? That there would be no put down on one another. There would be just an understanding. Amen? Amen? And that we need to understand God also. He is, as you saw those personalities, probably he's many more times that. But we can see God in all that. That he's slow to anger. He's just. He's kind. He's strong. He's all those things. He gives life. He gives death. He raises up. And he puts down. And we can find such comfort in that. Such comfort in that. That we serve a God like that. That you will sit there today knowing that everything that you stand for is coming up as, as a memorial before God. Good or bad. Good or bad. It's coming up before God. It's coming up before God. Let me tell you something about your bad side. If you have a righteous heart. If you have a righteous heart and you say, I want to overcome that. I know that it's wrong. I see that it's wrong. God has put it on my heart that it's wrong. This is what I believe. I believe when it comes up before God, he sees that you want to do something about it. Because that's all God wants to do is something about it. Amen? And you're in full agreement right there. You're in full agreement with God right there. I can see God that God says, you're going on with me. You're somebody that I can work with. You consider me in my ways. Let's go on. Amen? That's what God is all about. So know this, that your, your good things, your, uh, your life is not hid before God. You wonder, hey, where are you at, God? God says, by the way, just yesterday, everything that's in your life came up as a memorial before me. And oh, by, I sent an angel. I sent an angel. Although he's fighting with the powers of darkness, he's getting to you. He's getting to you to make a difference. So don't make a, so, so take it easy. Take it easy. Know that I'm there. God looks at people like that. And I was, I was reading this and, uh, and trying to put this together last night. I says, God, you've got to show me. And so he showed me a city. And now we see cities. And he showed us a nation. And we have cities in the United States. One wor some worse than others. Some better than others. And I pray this. I pray that God save the cities that are righteous before him. That doesn't meet destruction. You know what I mean? That God would have a place where his people would go in safety. But when you see a city destroyed, just get closer to God. And don't fret, because God's involved in that. When you see a nation fold, don't worry, God is in control. It's all come up before the Lord. Amen? And when you worry about Israel, you need to read the, the end of the book. Amen? They have a Messiah that they're going to accept. Amen? Amen. And I want, you, I want you to see, although God is shaking your, your life, God wants to be in control of your life. And God is shaking Israel, and God wants to be in control of Israel. And Jesus is coming back to save them right at the end. Amen? That's a faithful God, isn't it? That's faithful, even though they're rejecting him right now. That's what God is doing. 
Hallelujah. We serve a good God. He's so just. He's so just and he's so good. So as you're following God. Getting the junk out. Know that God looks at all that. God looks at all that. And your part is. To put the warning out. Like Jonah. Your part is to build, build a way of escape. Like Noah. Build a way of escape. Amen. For you and your family and God's family. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. That's the ark. That's the ark. And the mercy seat's on top of it. Amen. Isn't that where the mercy seat was? On the ark of the covenant. Where the blood of Jesus covers the sin. There's forgiveness there. Amen. And Jesus went to the mercy seat and sprinkled his blood. And he told Mary, I've not yet ascended. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I've got to go to heaven. Amen. But he was back right away too. Quick trip. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.